Are you going to click it? I did. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Welcome back to the NAO show, boys and girls. We are just learning how to record stuff on Teams. And yeah, we just messed that all up. So what's this yeah. piece stuff? <laughs> you, yeah, you, you, you messed it up. That's right. I'm glad that you took ownership on it. So uh, we got a great show for you this evening. We are 14 days out from live football. That actually counts. So we are just ready to get these points a rolling. I don't know if everybody else is really ready in the NAO because to lose to me every week is not going to be fun for everybody but me. So I don't know about you, Marky Mark. What do you think? Yeah, man. I think you got the inside track to the championship for sure. So I'd be excited. Oh, appreciate you. I'd be excited if I was you too, man. I really would. <laughs> I really would. <laughs> what are we talking about tonight there, Marky Mark? Well, tonight we're going to do like a, uh, it's a cup half full show. You're gonna, we're Ooh, gonna, optimistic. Yeah, yeah. We're going to look at some rosters, all the rosters, I guess. We're going to look at some players that maybe are a little bit under the radar, talk about people that we think could break out and maybe make uh, some managers overperform. I don't know if that's the best word, perform better than we perform I better than it. expected. I got it. The silly What's dilly that? effect. Yeah. <laughs> to overperform week in and week out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the cool thing about it is these players have the ADP and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't really care, man. We're just going to talk about guys that we, we see that are maybe a little bit under the radar that we think could do better than where they're being drafted or how they're being ranked right now. And all right, all uh, right. so it's a sort of a best case kind of show tonight. Oh, all right. I see what you did there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So who's, gonna, the, who's the first one we're going to knock out this morning, this evening? We're, we're, we're going to start with Tank Top Mike. Ooh, and, I got a uh, for him. Yeah. Go down, go down your list there. Tell me, tell me who we're going to talk about. First. So I got two. I got two. Uh, both of them are wide receivers. Okay. Neither of them are on his starting bench right now. Perfect. Uh, you're going to like this first one because you made a trade with him so he could go ahead and get this guy. Okay. I think I know who it is. Mr. Dotson and the Commanders. Yeah, John Dotson. All right. John Dotson. I mean, all right. Think of it this way. There's no clear wide receiver to in Washington. Everybody loves mixed scoring. Obviously, you love mixed scoring a little bit, you know? Yeah, um, still a believer. I think there's a wide open avenue for somebody to actually make a step and get a lot of play, a lot of targets, a lot of opportunities, you know? Yeah. And Dotson could be one of those guys that isn't somebody that's being talked about right now because, like, right now, Drake London, Alave, Pierce, uh who else is being really talked about? Pickens. Pickens. All yeah, those guys yeah. are getting a bunch of hype out of uh, camp going into the season, but Dotson is not getting any love right now. And I think a lot of us are going to be kicking ourselves for not trying to go after him. And I think uh, it's going to add a lot of depth for Mike if he makes a long run into this uh, into this season, and he's going to really Dotson could be that one of those factors for uh the bye weeks that is going to be worth his weight in gold yeah i think i think he's not getting a lot of love because carson wentz is getting a lot of hate right now and he's um, on the commanders yeah that's what i'm saying it's just uh some of the other guys a little bit more exciting to talk about dotson man he's he's interesting because i didn't end up drafting him in any of my four dynasty leagues um and and to, to tell you the truth i've just always leery about guys his size because the history's not good. I honestly think, though, even though I I ended up not drafting him, that he is he could be the exception to that rule because he doesn't play as, that small. He's actually a good contested catch guy to be a shorter guy. And right. um, he's a good route runner. He gets open. I think he's going to be Wentz's best friend, man. I, I think Wentz is going to – Wentz loves to take shots down the field, so I'm still yeah. loving, you know – McLaurin there 
but you know if uh if he wants to check down at all then that that's a guy he's going to be spotting open i think i think he'll get open i think he'll uh he'll be he'll be good for for wins you know do you think he's going to have like a waddle rookie year where you just get going to he might not have a lot of uh, average uh yards per depth depth what is it what do they say it is like the average depth oh, for yards or whatever depth it's called depth for target or yeah right yeah. But uh, he might get so many targets in a PPR or half PPR league. He's gonna be somebody worthwhile, you know, kind of like a Waddle last year, where he had yeah a bunch of targets. You know, it's probably not a bad comparison. I he's he's definitely he's definitely got some skills, and you know Samuel's been hurt, and uh, Samuel man kind of disappointing. He just never seems to put it together. And yeah. Uh, if he's if he's going to be hurt this year, I think Dotson will step right in and and uh, take advantage of that situation. And yeah, I I think I think he'd be the the clear number two. Definitely gonna I f- I feel like he'll get a lot of targets. I I think the Waddle comparison is good. They might not be, you know, maybe the air yards aren't there, but I mean, right. if you get enough targets and receptions, and can do things after the catch like Dotson can, then maybe it turns into something nice. And he might not be like fantastic for the commanders, but for a fantasy owner, he might be gold, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So well, was, the other was, person I yeah. had, the other person I had for uh tank top was uh, Kenny Galladay. Like uh, Kenny Galladay, like if he stays healthy, I think we've been saying that for like the last four and a half years though. But uh, I mean, Kadarius Tony is the only person, other person that I think is going to be above him. If Galladay is Galladay and stays healthy and is able to be that guy, he might be able to get a lot of contested looks in the end zone and be one of those. If he scores a touchdown, he's going to get you 12 points that day, you know? Yeah. Well, Tony, Tony has been nursing injuries already. And, uh, they got uh, Wandale there that's, that just seems to be having a good camp. Um, but, yeah, and, and Sterling Sharp's coming back from an Achilles injury. Um, Somebody Colin, picked him up today. I don't know who that was. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Colin Johnson, I think, is out now with an Achilles injury. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Galladay all of a sudden, I, I, I'm sure that nobody is in love with Kenny Galladay. Probably right. nobody is looking to get him on their team. But I think the situation has fallen into place for him. So he's I think he's just been such a diva over the years. And people are talking about how he's not doing anything in preseason looking bad. I think he's one of these guys that when the lights come on, you know, aka when it's regular season, that he's gonna play harder, run harder, all of that, you know. He it's just a question of now that he's older and he's been nursing injuries, can he can he put it together? You know, last year, um I was listening to some podcast that that said that um, actually he played in most of the games last season, but it doesn't seem like it, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it seem like he well, was injured? <laughs> I mean, they got Danny Dimes out there, and yeah. he's not anything great. And yeah. everybody was just playing for him. I dare you to run on us, you know, like yeah. run yeah. on us because you don't have Saquon and nobody else is going to do anything. So we're just going to play zone all game long, and yeah. Danny Dimes can't beat the zone. We'll see. We got we got new new blood in there on the coaching staff, and I think it's Kenny's last stand. I mean, he they got to keep him around. the The contract they gave him was kind of stupid, um, <laughs> and they lose a lot of money. So they they they're gonna have to try to use him and get get a return on that investment. So I think you he's a good else dark is horse. Be saying that in in about a year, year and a half, it's gonna be the Jags on Christian uh, on Kirk. Yeah, we'll see what happens there, but. <laughs> But that's that's a that's a darkest of dark horses right there. But I I kind of agree with you that I feel like he might just be able to finally put together a, one good season for him, one last good season. Because I sure wouldn't be calling it many more seasons, you know. No 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 no. This is this is it. If he yeah. can't do it this year, he's a drop for anybody that's has a pulse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Real quick before we move on from tank tops. Uh, roster we'll go with uh i wanted to just give honorable mention to khalil herbert um i actually that great what a great fifth round pick we make jokes about you know picking herbert's in the fifth you know um i got him in the fifth round of another dynasty two and i'm just real excited about him because 
I think I honestly think he's better than uh, Montgomery overall. I think Chicago uh, knows that now. Yeah, now they've got a new coaching staff, and I think they'll spread. They might spread it around a little bit more. I think uh, Montgomery's in his last year as well, mm-hmm. so uh, I I can just see Herbert kind of digging into that a little bit, and if Montgomery is hurt. Um, you know, it's, I think Herbert can step right in and be, you know, we did it last year when he, when he got the opportunity, he was really good. I think we'll see, we could see more of that and maybe even, um, maybe a flex worthy guy. We'll have to see how that shakes out in, in Chicago, bad team, bad offense, but really good player right there. So nothing better than a rookie on a rookie deal for yeah. a team. All right. So we are going to move down the line and we're going to talk about mcjammer's daddies what (laughs) all right so i was looking at your lineup there mcjammer and there's uh two guys that jump out at me that could be your diamond in the rough as they say and really add a lot of oomph to your starting lineup uh i actually want to talk about the second guy first um the first guy i have is elijah moore but uh, the second guy I have is Irv Smith. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, cool. Tight end, Minnesota. Minnesota needs a tight end. And there's a bunch of talk this offseason that Minnesota is going to go to a more air raid uh, offense and a tight end that can catch the ball, that stays healthy, that can be a big body in the end zone could be very, very beneficial to you on, in uh, fantasy. And I mean, Justin Jefferson, he can he's gonna catch everything he's thrown to him, but he can't score every touchdown for the team. So I think Irv Smith could be a maybe a Dalton Schultz this year, you know? Somebody that you no one's really looking at, no one's really uh really excited about or anything, but by the end of the year he could be very, very tasty. Yeah, that's I mean that's why I went after him um in the off season and Got him in that. I traded. I traded it out of the third round there. Um, I think it was pick thirty, if I'm not mistaken, that I traded out and got Smith there. And I was really happy about that because I felt like he was as good or better than anybody I might have picked there, and someone that can help me right away. Um, you know, with Kittle, um, of course he's going to be in my starting lineup, but definitely has had durability problems and consistency issues. Yeah, consistency issues. So. I wanted I wanted somebody that I thought might be able to break out this year a little bit under the radar kind of guy, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah I do I do like Smith and Conklin's out of the way I think Conklin's Conklin's good he took some of the red zone end zone kind of work away, uh, but now that he's kind of out of the way and Smith's the top guy, as long as that thumb is healing up and he can get back in there, then uh, I, I do feel good about him I think he could be definitely. Uh, one of the under radar guys that could help me out there, strengthen up I that think, uh, tight end spot. I think the thumb issue is more of an off season issue. If this was the if this was the regular season, that wouldn't be even brought up. It'd just be like tape the thing. I'm still playing type deal. Yeah. So, I mean, Irv Smith is at he's at the prime to start making the jump. You know, he's been yeah. in the league a few years. Uh, usually, you got to get tight ends a few years to get acclimated to the nfl level and right now it's it's perfect storm for him he's going to be on a team that's going to be scoring they're going to be making moves down the field and he needs to be part of it you know i'd say i'm i'm a little concerned i mean he you need to be participating in training camp it's not good not to be um so i'm a little concerned about that i think he'll be ready but he may be a little bit slower coming along because he he didn't really do much in training camp i'm sure he's sure he's running and and working out right but he's probably he's only taking mental reps he's not out there catching the ball and uh so I, I, i'm mildly concerned about that well you're in a good position with it because you have kittle yes he's hot and cold sometimes boom bust what have you uh depending on game plan but if it takes two or three weeks for smith to start consistently getting you 10 to 11 points it'll be worth it in the long run yeah yeah the other guy was elijah moore i'm gonna i'm actually gonna say that uh zach going down might be a benefit to him (laughs) because joe falk 
Falco. Flacco. 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 Uh, Falco is the. Uh, that's the movie. That's the movie quarterback. I said that, Shane and Falco. I, I saw Mike in his jersey, and I was like, oh, that's not it. <laughs> Joe Falco and then Shane Flacco. Okay, we got it. We're straight. <laughs> All right. I think uh, him being a veteran quarterback and being able to read defenses a little more might benefit more uh, with his ability to get open a little quicker. Might be able to hit him a little earlier, you know? Uh, so I think... I think he's going to be the guy that's going to really benefit from that. And then the the offense and the head coach is going to see that he's going to be an asset. And Zach is going to be more, hey, I need to get the ball to this guy. And it'll just snowball effect. Well, he's he's a very talented receiver. He did some good things with some, uh, you know, some average quarterbacks last year. Below average, uh, I think. <laughs> he he did he did have the durability issues though. So if you know, I'm I'm looking at him as a guy that if he can stay healthy, I think he's a guy that can kind of be parked in my flex and may help me get more points than than I'm projected every week if he can do things like he did last year because he, he had some really good games last season. What um, do you think his ceiling is? Uh, wide receiver two. Oh, easily, easily. Yeah, if he if he plays the whole season, I think he's easily a wide receiver too. Because um, you know, uh, Flacco Flacco is still, you know, he's he's not mobile at all. <laughs> he's but, gonna sling it. You know, yeah. like he has nothing to lose. He's, he's got the arm and and he's got the experience to read defenses and whatnot. You know, that guy uh, Mike White was Mike White. Yeah, White did well with him last year. So whether it's, you know, Wilson or Flacco or White, I just feel like Moore is talented enough to um, to put up some good numbers. He can, he can. He's like the mixed scoring of the Jets. Like, it doesn't matter who's <laughs> back there throwing in the ball. He's going to do OK, at yeah. least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, for, for my on my roster, the, the honorable mention would go to Pickens just because he's been doing so well here. Uh, he's been fire. When we got him in the secret league, I was like doing backwards <laughs> in the backyard. I was so yeah. happy. A lot, a lot of hype. So, um, you know, and he's, he, I'm not, I'm not getting caught up in that so much. But when I did draft him in this league, and I got him in another dynasty league as well, um, I knew he'd be there in the second round, and I knew he had. I felt like he had the ability to be as good or better than any of the top receivers going before him. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like if he if he can live up to that, there's another guy that, you know, how many times you get a rookie that you got up in your flex getting the extra points. So I feel like he's one that could definitely uh, uh, be a best case scenario kind of guy for me. If not this year, definitely next year. Yeah, he's definitely a good dynasty <laughs> asset. It, it's looking good for him, really. All right, All right go moving to the down next the line, one we're going to go to mine. What do you got for me? Oh, that's right. You wanted me to you wanted me to come up with some guys, so I'm kind of going off the cuff here. I I'd really like to say Ayuk, but you got him up there in your starting lineup, you know. So let's uh, let's let's scroll down here. Right, let's let's uh, let's talk about Albert O. What do you Albert? think about? Oh, okay. What do you think All about right. Albert O. Do you want to do you want to start off? Or do you want me to start off? Go ahead. Him? I mean, it, it's first. funny because uh, he played he played in the fourth quarter. Therefore, he sucks. He's not going to. He played in the fourth quarter of a preseason game. So he yeah. sucks. He's toast, man. He's the. And it's just so crazy, man. The, you know, preseason has changed. And everybody's kind of feeling their way through now with three games. We used to kind of know the cadence of it, you know. Um, right. We knew that in that third game that the starters would play for a half, you know. And and uh, in the fourth game, all the scrubs would play and they'd make their cuts. You know, now we just don't know. They're, the the coaches are still feeling their way through it. You know, and um, I don't know. I think he was just out there because he needed to be out there. Dulcich has been hurt. Who else is on that team? I'm sure there's somebody. I, is Jake Butt still with him? I don't know. <laughs> I no yeah, I'm saying I'm just going off the top of my head. You know, I I really feel like yeah, Okwebanam could uh, definitely. Um, Make some noise this year. I think uh, Dulcich is good. I I like Dulcich a lot. I, I honestly think he could be their their tight end of the future. But 
just like just like any tight end coming in there's a learning curve and albert O, man he's he's shown the athleticism he's a good contested catch guy and i just feel like uh you know especially with patrick being out i feel like if if patrick was still in there i'd say albert O could do okay but now with patrick out I, I'm, I'm saying albert O is going to be the tim patrick he's going to be the red zone guy Oh, you know, he's going to be the end zone guy. He's going to be, he's he's going to get a chance to get his. I think. What do you what do you think about it? I think I think with Tim Patrick being out, R.I.P. Tim Patrick, because he is like great asset to have regardless of where he's at. But with him being out, it is wide open. You know what I mean? Like it could be Hamler, it could be uh, A.O. It could be a guy that we're not even looking at right now to be wide receiver three and get that those. And then we don't know like how Russ is going to divvy up the ball. You know what I mean? Is it going to go to the running backs when it's, uh, when the play breaks down, is he going to just sling it out to somebody when the play breaks down? Is he going to have guys that he wants to pinpoint right off the bat? Like as soon as the play starts, who is he looking at? You know? Yeah. There's so many questions in Denver. It's to the point where people don't even know who the wide receiver one is. Is it freaking Judy? Is it Corlin Sutton? Like, no, you can't make it. You can make a good argument, but still, you can always be like, well, what about him? You know, like, regardless of your argument, you have no idea. With uh, Patrick being out, I think there's targets to be had, and it could go either way. And our O could be the beneficiary of that. Yeah, Russell Russell tends to he uses his feet to keep plays alive and make pass. He doesn't he doesn't he doesn't run as much as he scrambles to to make a play downfield. And he tends to look downfield, you know. So I not that he won't dump off to the running backs now and then, but I think he's more of a design play to the running backs kind of guy. And then mm-hmm. otherwise he's looking downfield. So and that's why, you know, Albert O, he's 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 not your he, he he's a more of a receiver type, you know. Right. Um, I, I feel like he could he could compete with Judy and Sutton. I if I had to call it, I'd say Sutton, and not just because I have, you know. I'd, <laughs> I'd say if I had to call it, I'd say Sutton will be his top guy. Um, Judy's still kind of a. It, this is a big year for Judy, you know. But Albert O, I feel like could just be solid, you know, and he could compete for that number two spot even on that team. Um, oh, that God, might be. That might be. Yeah, you'd love that, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, no, I would be so sad. Oh, you got Jerry Judy, Judy, too. I need Jerry Judy to be the number two, if not number one. Yeah, it's it's a big year for Judy, I'll tell you. Uh, he's, Golly. Yeah, yeah. Judy is a great route runner. He's got to put it together this year. He's just got to put things together this year. So, And 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 if he does, then Alberto would be the number three, I think. I like Hamler, but, you know, Hamler's going to be that – that boomer bus guy, I think. Yeah. I'd love to have him on a. He's gonna be the Tyler Lockett of Denver, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna have like three targets, and if he has a big game, it's gonna be one of those targets went for ninety yards. You know. Yeah. He'd be a good best ball guy, but I, I don't know if I'm crazy about him as a as a flex on a weekly basis. So. I'm I'm torn between the next two guys, man. So I'm gonna t- I'm gonna let you choose who you want to talk about on your roster. All right. Two guys that you got. As rookies here, one you drafted, one you traded for. Ooh, um, I know who you're talking about. So we got Damian Pierce at running back, or we have Chris Olave. We'll talk about one in depth, and the other one we'll just give a quick hitter on. So which one do you want to talk about more? All right, so Damian Pierce is going to be the guy that everyone in the first round is going to be kicking themselves. Let and let him drop to me in the second fucking round. <laughs> Everybody's going to be so mad that they they didn't take him in the first round. It's going to be glorious. Absolutely glorious. Chris Olave is going to be freaking the best wide receiver this year. So, it, as a rookie, best rookie wide receiver this year. But Damian Pierce is going to be fantastic. Yeah. That's, I guess it's kind of fitting we talk about both those guys because looking at your roster that you had built up and got a lot of young receivers, you've got uh, Burrow there, a quarterback, which is really solid. And you, you get a guy like Pierce, you get a guy like Alave that you traded for, and they could be guys that that definitely push you um, and make you a tough out every week. 
if they mm-hmm. if they can achieve what we think they can. I I really yeah Pierce you know I'm high on him. We got him in the we picked him in the secret league at number <laughs> nine. We picked Thank him you, as, Landon. We picked him in number nine, and I think everybody thought we'd lost our freaking minds. <laughs> but you know, weeks go by, and it's like, huh? Now the people are now the people are on the phone. They're, they're calling. They're calling funny, about Pierce. Funny you right? say that because I was looking at <laughs> uh, projections on sleeper for rookies, rookie running backs. Guess yeah. who's number two now? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope. I hope he can live up to the hype. It's a lot of hype right now, but you look at that Houston backfield and he doesn't have as much competition. And I think um, he flew under the radar because his production wasn't good, but I, I don't think it meant that he wasn't a good player, just that he wasn't used correctly. He didn't get to to shine like some of these yeah. other guys. But he went to the Senior Bowl and he shone or he shined or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> he Show balled out. out. He balled out. <laughs> Um, yeah, quick finish up with Olave. Um, yeah, uh, Thomas, you know, he's just like a lot of these players, especially at their age. Michael Thomas comes in there, was looking good, but he's he's trying to come back from injury and you get other injuries, you know. Um, it's kind of like the same old story for some of these guys. So with 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 Thomas, I thought, well, maybe Olave will be kept in check a little bit. But if Thomas misses any time. I, to me, it just seems like a no-brainer. I think Alave, probably one of the best, if not the best, route runner coming out of this rookie class. He's going to be he's going to be open. He's going to be a nice target for Winston there. So going into the rookie draft, I tend not to do a lot of research uh, while the uh, college season is going. So as soon as the college football season is off, I start gradually looking at people before the end of the college football season i was like i want one of these ohio state wide receivers on my team and i remember telling you that i was like yeah yeah you should i don't know anything about anybody yet but i know i want one of these ohio (laughs) state wide receivers on my team yeah when we got to the rookie draft i was like if alave falls to us we are drafting alave (laughs) so I honestly think if Michael Thomas is good, if he's Michael Thomas of old, that benefits Alave because Alave is going to yeah. be going against uh, their second best corner, right? If he's not, just by the pure fact of how many targets he's going to get from Janus, he's going to be good fantasy wise. Maybe not like the team might not be that great, but Alave will be really good. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think it's all upside for him right now. And you know my team. That's what I chase is giant upside. Buy low, <laughs> get a lot of points. All right. That's good stuff, man. Let's move on to our next uh, roster here. All right. Please. We're going to move on to F and G. The two guys I got uh, for him on his bench that I like besides his rookies, because Drake London's getting a bunch of hype coming out of uh, – Camp this year. Traylon? You saying Traylon? Drake London. Oh, Drake London. I'm sorry. I thought you said Traquan. <laughs> you said no. it fast. You said it fast. Drake London. You know? All right. Drake, Drake London's getting a lot of hype. He, he's going to do, I think he's going to have a really good year. I am back and forth on Burks in Tennessee, but I'm leaning more towards the negative for him. And then with uh, Walker, he's got. He's got some leg issues, some injury issues. But the two guys I want to talk about is uh, Nick Westbrook Akine. <laughs> wow. Okay. And then MVS. So All right. All right. I think MVS could be a sleeper in the fact that we just don't know what Sky Moore is going to do coming out the gate. And it might take him a little while to get get going. And we all know that uh, Kelsey is the, his first look, Patrick Mahomes' first look. And then there's going to be a wide receiver in Kansas City that needs to break out and be somebody that Patrick Mahomes can look at. I'm hoping, as a CEH owner, that that is CEH. But uh, the last two years have not lived up to that. So MVS is who I think could be a beneficiary of Sky Moore 
if he has a slow start to the season. Uh, and then Akine, uh, I think he could be a dark horse in Tennessee. I know they're a run first team, but uh, somebody's got to catch it. They can't run every down, you know, and somebody's got to catch a ball. And if Burks is having a slow start also, somebody else is going to have to get something like targets, you know. So he might have some pretty good upside. Yeah, you know, um, he's he's kind of the the guy there that has any kind of rapport with Tannehill right now. And he's he's had his moments there. So it, you surprised me when you when you picked that when you picked Akine, but I kinda after thinking about it, I'm thinking, yeah, Burks, I think maybe I, I think he's got a lot to learn to be a receiver in the NFL. I think he's a he's a really good uh, athlete, but you know, he's got he's gotta learn how to get up press coverage. He's gotta learn how to run routes. He's gotta he, he can't do what he did at Arkansas. I don't think and just uh, run by people. I yeah. mean, if if they if they have packages for him like that, okay. But I, if if he's supposed to be the Brown replacement, then he's he's not he's not AJ Brown uh, by yeah. any means, you know. So he would have a steep learning curve there. Whereas, you know, Westbrook Akine, he's he's been there. He's got some rapport with him. Um, he's a yeah. veteran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could he could be a, a good a good deep sleeper there. I like that. I like that one. Um, MBS, he's interesting, man, because he hasn't had issues getting open. He's had issues catching the ball some, um, and, and, and he's just been inconsistent, whether it's, you know, I mean, he, he's, he's had big plays and, and Mm -hmm. big games based on those big plays, but then, you know, we've seen games where he drops the ball or we see games where he, he's just not getting open. So he's just been a little bit inconsistent. So he's got a, he's got a. Put it together and be a little bit more consistent. I think, I think he, uh, you know, coming from Rogers, who Rogers makes receivers better. I think, and right. now he's and now he's going to Mahomes, who can do the same. So he's definitely he's had good guys to to coach him up out there on the field. So, so if if he and if he and Mahomes get on the same page, and he can be consistent, he I think he could be the top guy this year. I really do. It's hard. It's it feels weird to say that, <laughs> but I'm kind of with you on Sky Moore. I think he's got a lot of he's got a lot of upside, but um, he's from a smaller um, he's from a smaller school. He's got the learning curve, and I, I think he'd be more of a I'd I'd predict if I was betting money, it'd be mid season to late season breakout for him, not right right away. I think he's got a little bit of learning curve too. So let me put it this way. All right, so MVS is in Green Bay, but Aaron Rodgers' favorite target, Devontae Adams, is also in Green Bay. And MVS knew that the ball was always going to go to Adams because everybody with a television knew that it was always probably going to go to Adams, right? So he didn't have a whole lot to play for. Now he comes to Kansas City. Patrick Holmes is going to throw to the person that is open. You know what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't hone in on one person like Aaron Rodgers does. That will give MVS more, something more to play for. You know what I mean? Like every time he is a pass play, there's a chance the ball could could come to him. You know what I mean? That is going to give him motivation every time he gets lined up, you know? And not to say that he has anything, he needs anything more to play for, but... It's the freaking Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, they're going to yeah. go deep into the playoffs. You know, we're t- if they're t- they're saying, "Hey, we're going to the freaking Super Bowl, and we're not doing well." You know what I mean? So he's got plenty to play for, and every snap he's got the opportunity to be the person to get the ball. So I think there's a lot of uh, mental stuff with that, which will benefit his dropping the ball. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I think dropping the ball for a guy of his caliber, of any professional wide receiver, is just going to be mental. Yeah, yeah, very true. Um, before we move on from FNG's uh, roster, for, for our buddy Tank Top Mike, who's not with us tonight, he's on vacation and enjoying some time with with his loved one. Um, you know, Miles Sanders has got a, a hamstring issue right now, so Boston Scott, 
FNG. Start Boston Scott. You got to start, start Boston, Boston Scott. Scott. <laughs> Put him down there in your flex, man. It won't hurt anything, man. If if Sanders is out with that, you know, everybody's talking about game. Well, fine. Boston Scott has been a constant there in Philly. You got to start Boston Scott. All right. Tank Top Mike is going to be very disappointed if you have Boston Scott on your bench, FNG, getting a lot of points when he told you time after time. Okay. <laughs> this Boston Scott plug has been brought to you by Tank Top Tank Tops. Tank Top Company. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> quality tank top since 2019 right. <laughs> or is that 2020 i don't think he started tank top still second i think year, it's 2020 right? i think it was 2020 I think it was the new year bringing you the guns since 2020 all right all right we're gonna move on down this list we're gonna go to humpty dumpty had a great fall which is the byline for his whole team and his whole time in the nao but all right let's talk about a couple guys here all right. And one of them I want to bring up is a very sore subject in my in my NAO career. Let's just start it with there. All right. So Romeo Dubs, I think he is got as much of a chance to be wide receiver one as anybody else out on that team. Like, tell me who the wide receiver one is on that team. I'll well, wait. I mean- <laughs> You, because you don't know. Everybody's saying Alan true. Lazard because he's been there longer, but he's also been there longer and he hasn't done anything. So where where is the pudding in this? You know what I mean? I think if anybody can be wide receiver one, Dubs could be wide receiver one, and he could be starting in the flex spot for Humpty Dumpty in no time. Well, what do you think about that? Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I I love what Dubs has done. Now I'll tell you, when when they when they drafted him, Dubs was was definitely on my radar. I thought he might be a good uh, late round dart throw. Um, coming out of Nevada, I believe it was. I think it was Nevada. Um, yeah, with Carson Strong, not not you know. Not not anything flashy, but just a solid kind of guy. Um, right. An, another guy that's under the radar that I thought could probably outperform the perception, his perception anyway, you know. Uh, of course, he goes to Green Bay and um, has a few few good practices and good preseason stuff, and everybody's on him now. Um, but it's still, he's still a rookie with Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is such a dang diva. You know, and he's hundred percent a diva. And as I soon saw, as, as I saw him come out and go, there's a lot of drops out here with these wide rookie wide receivers, and I just started laughing because that is a hundred percent Aaron Rodgers just being yeah. like, Oh, these guys don't rate to be on the field with me, blah blah blah. And he's he's probably just trying to fire him up, try to get him pissed off and and see if they'll dig down and play harder, you know. But you know, he as just soon comes as, off as a giant douche though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> As soon as soon as Dubs, you know, runs the wrong route, isn't where he wants him to be, doesn't read the defense, you know, he's going to be getting pissed off at him. So that's where I feel like Lazard maybe has a chance there. But it, uh, you, you think about Lazard, he's been there a couple of years, undrafted free agent. They only gave him a one year deal, like a it was like <laughs> a RFA tender, sort of like, yeah, you know, we we'll don't give want... you a twenty piece chick McNugget, yeah, right. and you can come play with us. <laughs> It's sort That's of we don't we don't want anybody else to have you, but you mean enough to us to give you decent money for an you know undrafted free agent. So we'll see what happens with Lazard. I he's good. Uh, I'm sorry, he's I said he's good. He's big. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's a he's a decent contested catch guy. Just I mean he's an undrafted free agent for a reason. He he's you know not as polished as some of the other receivers in the league, but he's had his moments. We've seen that. So. I just kind of feel like it's going to be the ball is going to be spread around. If they, Tunyon gets back in there, he could be their top guy. Who knows? Because he's got the rapport with with Rogers, you know, or speaking Degura, of which, you know. Speaking of which, where the heck is Amari Rogers? Like when yeah. he got drafted by Green Bay, I was like, oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. That's the wide receiver everybody was waiting for. 
And he has just done absolutely freaking nothing. Uh, he's another rookie, and that's why I say just be cautious when you're, you know, elevating Dubs. I think Dubs is good, and uh, definitely he is one that could help them outperform their weekly projections for sure if he starts doing some things. So it's just shaky ground for me because of all of what we just talked about. So. <laughs> Who else did you want to talk about on their uh, their roster? Uh, did you forget? Terrence Marshall. Terrence Marshall. Terrence Marshall? Oh, oh wow. God. Like, yeah. All right. So, there. All right. He's from LSU. He's, he's not JJ. He's not Chase. Those guys are in a different stratosphere compared to him. But. I think there's a lot of openings behind uh, DJM. You know, there's somebody that could, I think it's, I hope it's Robbie Anderson because I, I picked him up, but there's a lot of open space that could be uh, really filled by somebody like him. You know, with Baker being called the number one, the QB one, which I think we all knew was just writing on the wall as soon as they picked him up, obviously. Because Baker is way better than Sam Darnold. But uh, I think there's potential for him to actually make a breakout. You know, like, I don't think he's going to be wide receiver two or anything, something crazy like that. But he's going to be somebody that you're looking at during those bye weeks. And you're like, I kind of like this matchup. He's been doing all right. He has potential to do something for me. And he's going to be the guy that you stop and you're like questioning if that makes sense. Like, should I start him? Should I not start him? It's good. I need somebody, but is he the guy that I want to put in there? I think that is what uh, is going to happen to Humpty Dumpty there. Well, he's Marshall's missing some time with a hamstring right now. And uh, I like Marshall, but not getting work in with Mayfield right now, who we know is the starter, finally. Like there was a question that Darnold might be in the yeah. mouth. <laughs> I there don't know. No I, question. I, I was still believing in Darnold until last year. And then I was like, well, I, I will say that that line was crap. I can't blame it all on Darnold, but he just doesn't seem to be making that step up. But uh, I digress. Uh, yeah, I, I like Marshall a lot, but I, I think if he's going to do anything, it's going to be later in the season just because he's not getting that work in right now. So I'm with you as far as the talent's concerned, but I'm thinking with that hamstring, missing time, not able to get in reps with uh, Mayfield, it might take a little bit. Um, Rashard Higgins is there now, and he's got he's got some history with, with Mayfield. Got yeah. some rapport there with Mayfield. I um, wonder who has him on his, their team. Yeah, so... He's one that's a little bit under the radar. That yeah, yeah, we could have talked about him with your squad, right? Yeah, so he's one that could be um, elevated up to maybe a number two that no one's really thinking about right now. Um, so yeah, well, I hope Marshall. I like Marshall. I hope I hope to see him do something. But if if I had to put any money on it, I'd say it'd be mid to late season breakout if he's going to do it. If he can get back healthy and on the field again, so. Um, before we move on from his man, there's, I you know I I normally would say let's just talk about one more guy, but there's two guys that I'm staring down right now that I really like. Oh, interesting. Okay. One of them I can talk about now because I found out yesterday that um, that uh, Ricky's not going to trade him away. Um, <laughs> I tried. Landon said, you know, no, no, you know, we can talk about it just about anybody else, but David Bell. Is is not going anywhere. So, <laughs> uh, I think I think that's probably the one guy that they've gotten uh, inquiries on the most yeah. this off season. Well, I don't even know. I don't know anything. I bet that's the one person that they've gotten the most out of. Yeah, uh, either him or Singletary as a buy low candidate. But Bell, yeah, I'm right there with you. After after I after I shared our trade talks in chat. Evan messaged me and said, hey, man, you ain't getting Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said Ricky thinks he's the second coming or something like that. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't getting Bell, man. And it's funny. The thing with Bell is the 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 analytics, the the metrics that I normally look at 
are really not there for him. But I think I've said in the past that he just seems to be a really good football player. You got you know? a gut feeling for him. Yeah, it's just he he gets it done. Sometimes, man, it's 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 about the guy who just goes out there and works hard, plays hard, and gets things done. I, I think he's kind of a blue collar dude, man. You know, so I think uh, I I like him on their roster, and I think that he could. I don't know that I'd be calling for him right early in the season to do it, but um, definitely I think before this season's out, there Ricky's going to be happy with that draft pick. So. The other one, real quick, is just Nico Collins, and I think didn't you didn't you you got him originally, right? Yeah. And then I I think I I was like, damn it, you know, I wanted him, and and Sean sniped him, and I I was looking to make a trade with you and get him as you a throw-in. You got him in the uh, Goddard trade. Yeah, yeah. So I finally, yeah, you you had something. I had something you wanted, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna get Nico finally, you know. And it's funny because uh, Ricky told me when he came in the league, he's like, "Hey, I'm, I like Nico." So I knew that. Uh, what was the What was the one I made? I made a trade with him, I think, for uh, for Marquise Brown. He wasn't really crazy about trading Marquise Brown, but when I said, "Hey, man, I'll give you Collins," and he was like, "Hmm, that's interesting." So that's <laughs> how he's on. That's how he's on Ricky's uh, roster. The, let me see Ricky's and Landon's. They're co-owners. Let me let me give our boy a little love too. You know, he's gonna make a trade here sometime soon. <laughs> all right yeah we can still we can keep dreaming for that one but i, I like moving nico. on moving on. well i'm just gonna say <laughs> i like nico i think he'll be their clear number two uh cooks is getting older and you know collins could be the top guy here before too long there so i like him there all so right we're gonna move on to the champ the reigning champ all Brand right avon's team over here orlando football orlando city football club all right. Lamest. He's got to get the freaking award for the lamest, lamest freaking team name ever. You know, he, like you absolutely bonkers. Does, doesn't he work like in financial, something to do with financial market or? Well, he works with banks and their software systems, but. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably all the rage with those guys, but <laughs> <laughs> but we're sort of like, dude, come on, come up with a better name, man. <laughs> he put it up there. I was like, you're not going to keep that, are you? He said, eh, I'll keep it up there until I figure out something else. He hasn't figured anything else out there than that. Come uh, on, man. He's got all two. Right. He's got two toddlers. Give him a break, man. <laughs> I, I, I digress. I digress. I digress. But uh, the guy that we want to talk about. With his lineup is a guy that he has stashed away on his uh, taxi, which I re- if I was him, blah blah blah, he would not start the season on my taxi squad. It's Kyle Phillips. Okay. What do you think about him there, Primo? Well, you know I'm high on him, man. Um, Didn't we just move him in the secret league for about uh, a freaking king's ransom? Well, yes, we, we- did. We yes, didn't get a did. King's Ransom. We got a lot more than what we paid for him. Uh, <laughs> what did we get? Did we get him in the fifth round or? Yeah, fourth I think round, we got fifth him in round. Fifth round, and we yeah. got we got a good little deal on that one. Man, that dude was my diamond in the rough. In every rookie draft, he was just there. Nobody was looking at Kyle Phillips, so he was a fifth rounder or a or a waiver pickup after the after the draft was over. And I got I got him I got a lot of them I, and I have to say kudos to Abom because he he drafted him and I'm like whoa <laughs> <laughs> nobody else he was the he was the only one even all those Tennessee fans that we we play this game with none of them were really on him and Abom was so I really give him props for because they were looking at the new shiny toy in uh, in Burks and they're like oh there's a new AJ Brown. <laughs> Well, which I he's mean, not. He's not the AJ Brown. He can't beat man-to-man coverage like AJ Brown can. Yeah, I agree with you. I, not only would he be on my roster, but he he may be in my flex sooner than later because I just think that uh, he's going to be the quarterback's friend. He's going to be that guy that's open, man. He's going to be that on a you need you need a couple of yards on third down. He's going to get that short pass that he maybe turns into something longer. He just, I mean, the reason I liked him is because the 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 feedback I was seeing on him was that he's always open. Every time you look up, that guy's open. 
What do wait, you want? Wait, 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 wait. What do you want to receive? Good for a wide receiver to be always yeah. open. I, Let's I, say. I, yeah. I don't know. Is that yeah, good? He's, <laughs> he's he's small. Definitely, I I I I kind of I'm not crazy about the smaller guys, but like I think Steve he's elusive Smith enough. Well, no, Steve Smith was a tougher guy, man. Steve Smith was tough for his size. He's he's definitely more of a Cole Beasley type, an Amendola type. That's just you know shifty, gets open. And uh, can avoid some contact just because he's so Two guys he's so that would lucid. average over 100 targets a, a year. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think he's got a good one there. I think he, he made a good pick there. Uh, yeah, get him off your taxi, man. Put him up there. He's going to be in your flex before too long. Pick up another rookie, man. Get another yeah. Get another dart throw. I We're mean, not he rookies just, out in this dynasty game right now, all right? Yeah. He, 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 he may be able to cut ties with Kenyon Drake. We'll see what happens with him. But Ooh, right now, you Kenyon, want to talk Drake, about Kenyon Drake, he's going to Baltimore. If Rojo doesn't get cut, he's going to Baltimore. And it's going to be the backup for uh, J.K. Dobbins. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you right now. Yeah. If Rojo gets cut, Rojo is going to Baltimore. Let's just put it there. Ah, uh, wow. Well, we kind of digressed on that one. So anything more about Phillips, dude? No, <laughs> I am good to go. Who's your next guy then? All right, we are moving down to the Swirl King himself, the proxy of our co-commissioner. Do we, do we talk about? We only talk. We're just going to talk about the one guy on his on his squad. Yeah, that's all I got. You got anybody right. else? I'll 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 just I'll just mention real quick. Honorable mention to uh, Khalil Shakir, another guy that, um, you know, he I was looking for him in the later rounds, and again had to give a bomb props for getting him. I don't think he's going to do as much this year, but I think it's a really that's going to be a good one. Either if there's an injury this year in Buffalo, um, I think he's the next man up, and by next year, I think he'll he'll be a big part. So, all right, moving on to the Swirl King, I got Josh Palmer down for him. What do you think? Palmer looking like he's going to have a breakout season, man. Um, what a great offense to be on, right? And we, we we were high on him anyway. And now, you know, now you look at what he's doing and um, you know, Keenan Allen getting older, Williams, you know, with durability problems. Josh Palmer's looking like a smash, man. I think he's gonna be a smash too. And when he drafted him, I was like, Yeah, he's gonna be good. He's gonna be real good. Is there anybody else on uh Goofy's team that you wanna Oh, well, that wasn't Bring Goofy's. Up. That wasn't Goofy's team. That was. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, that was Dilly's team. Dilly, Dilly. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, sorry, man. Um, we're kind of under the gun with our new teams thing. It just gave us a five-minute warning, which yeah, we're we not ready for. <laughs> we, did, we did not think we had a time limit, so we'll have to look into that. Darn it. Um. We'll figure that out. No, yeah, let's move on. Let's see if we can get a couple more All in right, here real moving quick. Moving on. We're gonna move it on to Goofy. I have Maybe. Alec Pierce. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, he is going to be straight fire. And the fact that I can't get him away from Goofy is making me real upset because we all know how I like a good rookie upside wide receiver. What do you think? Yeah, Pierce man, he's he's uh Looking good already. I think he's going to be definitely um, somebody Somebody there. With, with Pittman drawing attention, I think Pierce is going to be a, a really good one. They don't have a tight end really to speak of there. Um, you know, running backs will get some, but I think Pierce definitely I, – I, I just feel like he's going to be the number two right out of the gate. And I think that's going yes. to be a good thing in that offense, you know. Yes, and everybody's going to be sitting on the wide receiver one, and Pierce is just going to be like, yo – I'm, I'm actually pretty good. You might want to cover me. <laughs> and he's going to get the ball peppered to him, and it's going to be really, really nice. I like Tyquan Thornton on his squad. Of course, he's hurt now and out, and it kind of stinks because I felt like Tyquan was um, going to be somebody that was going to make a little bit of noise. That a I've lot got of people, some shares of him. Everybody's saying, oh, Bill doesn't know how to draft a receiver, but I, I I just was feeling like this could be the guy that finally breaks that Breaks the the schneid, you know, but <laughs> the schneid. <laughs> but he's going to be out probably what eight weeks at least, so we won't get to see it right away. So, all right, moving on to the next 
team because we have a deadline now. It's going to be the DBs. I have Cole Komet. I know that you love yourself some Cole Komet. What do you think? Yeah, I got him in a league where I got um, Fields, and I feel like it's such a crap show there that Komet. <laughs> Somebody's got to catch the football. Yeah, Komet will be the number two, and Mooney being a smaller guy, if he gets injured, Komet could be the number one. I feel like they got a good one there. If we get cut off, you have to. You, there's something you got to say if we get cut off. Oh about, yeah, about it our buddy. Suck. Right. <laughs> okay. So we'll probably will get cut off, but we're gonna move on here. I uh, they they got Gainwell. Gainwell. They got Pacheco. They probably want us to talk about Pacheco. Come on, no! Pacheco. Come on, no! with your Pacheco. But Gainwell, Gainwell. You know Sanders down. If you're not starting Boston Scott, maybe you start uh, Kenneth Gainwell, right? I think he could he could make a good jump in this second year. All right, moving to the guy that I will not mention. The only person I have on his team that I can speak something positive about is DJ Chark. He only has uh, upside. Like, he was hurt, and he's on a new team, and he he could do something, you know? He could do something. Well, he's, he's done it before, so, you know, he can do exactly. it again. Exactly. There's a, you know, Jameson's not going to be in there right away. So he's got as good a chance as anybody. Um, yeah, I like I like that call. What do you think about uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones? Any, any... I am a big, big advocate of DPJ. I, I didn't want to move him when he was in Cleveland. I thought he was going to break out in Cleveland. Uh, now that he's going to be there with a really, really good freaking quarterback, yeah, I'm really, really upset. I don't have him. Like he's gonna be <laughs> freaking crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, he could he could make a little noise there. We well, talked he's about make all the noise. Like he's gonna be the second guy against behind Amari. Everybody's gonna double team Amari and be like, oh, he's the only wide receiver. No, no, no. You're gonna fucking find out this season. Yeah. Well, we'll see there. We, you know, we I talked up David Bell a little bit. He is a rookie, so we may we may see. It. And of course, they don't have Watson right away. Starting with Reset. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll give an honorable mention to Tanya we talked about earlier. He seems to be having trouble getting back on the field, unfortunately. But, man, I feel like, but you know, Lazard and Tanya are the only guys that caught balls from him, right? From uh, If from Tanya can make it onto the field, he's going to get, like, 15 touchdowns this year. Yeah, he could. I mean, he could. He could do another, uh, you know, they said, they, they said, oh, he'll never do it again. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll get all them touchdowns again. What did he get, about 10 in one season? And, yeah, and you know, that's all he did. What, or uh, tight end three. And, uh, and it was 15 pretty much... targets that season, 10 touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate we had to rush through the end, but we, we I think we made it here. We'll figure out this team's crap. Yeah. Uh, tra- taping on a new, a new format this week. And we thought all we right. had unlimited time, but. That's our show this week. We got 14 days till real football. Ian, you suck.